The two cerebral hemispheres process huge amounts of information and are the location of our higher order thinking. These hemispheres receive sensory input from all the sense organs in the body. The left ear sends sensory information to the left temporal lobe of the brain, and the right ear sends sensory information to the right temporal lobe of the brain. Makes sense, right? Well, it's about to get weird. The rest of the body's impulses are sent to the opposite hemisphere of the brain. The right cerebral hemisphere receives sensory input from the left side of the body, and the left cerebral hemisphere receives sensory input from the right side of the body. In the eyes, the left field of vision for each eye is sent to the right visual cortex on the right occipital lobe and the right field of vision for each eye is sent to the left visual cortex on the left occipital lobe. The part of the frontal lobes that controls muscle activity is called the primary motor cortex. The primary motor cortex in the left frontal lobe controls muscles on the right side of the body. The primary motor cortex on the right frontal lobe controls muscles on the left side of the body. A stroke often paralyzes one side of the body. If the left side of the body has become paralyzed, this indicates the brain damage is actually in the right cerebral hemisphere, and vice versa. The major sensory and motor regions of the brain occupy the parietal and frontal lobes, respectively. Studies have revealed that the brain does not dedicate space evenly to parts of the body. The sensory homunculus shows how many nerves are dedicated to regions of the body by distorting the size of that body part. By the way, the word homunculus is just Latin for little man. You can see from this image that the hand is disproportionately large, which indicates that there are many nerves in the hand and much space dedicated to those neurons in the brain. The motor homunculus is similar to the sensory homunculus with much innervation in the hands and face. Our big thinking brains use a huge amount of energy. About 20% of your body's energy at the basal metabolic rate is dedicated to the brain. Even more energy is dedicated to the brain in children. The reason for this goes back to how neurons actually send messages. After each action potential, the sodium potassium pump must use ATP to restore resting potential and move sodium back out and potassium back into the cell. This happens repeatedly along the axon of every neuron in the body. It should be no surprise that the brain uses so much energy. Thanks for watching this episode of Teacher's Pet. Don't forget to like and subscribe and follow me on Twitter at SciencePet.